Okay, good afternoon. Thank you for, for coming. Uh, uh, without further ado, let me hand over to the President of the 70th Session of the UN General Assembly, Mr. Mons Lukatoft. Thank you, Dan. Well, I think uh, many of you is, are as, <coughs> as deeply shocked as I am about the news today concerning the president of the 68th session of the UN General Assembly. I can only agree churchily with the Secretary General when he said that, that if proven, uh, this is a, an attack at the very heart of uh, the uh, integrity of the United Nations. Let me say, we only learned about this this morning, as all of you did. Uh, neither are I nor the office have been contacted by U.S. authorities. But of course, we, we stand ready to engage with all concerned, if that's considered necessary. Uh, coming from a country which is consistently number one on the World Transparency Index. And having served for 34 years in Danish politics without being rich, uh, I, I, I uh, certainly am shocked about it. And I think the United Nations and its representatives should be held to the highest standards of transparency and ethics. And I, as you may remember, when I took office on this 70th session as president on the 15th of September, I committed myself to uphold these principles during my tenure, and I am firmly committed to do so. Corruption has no place in at the United Nations or anywhere else. Thank you. Should we take some questions? Yes, sir. Yes, President. Uh, uh, this morning there was a request of uh, uh, the possibility of seeing the document, if it exists, the UN document that is considered sent to China to support that project of this uh, UN center in Macau. Are you aware of this document? There is in any archive, is a fake document uh, that they, they used to convince the Chinese that was good or whatever? You don't know nothing about that? I don't know, don't know nothing about it. Uh, you may ask the Secretariat if they have anything in the archives. Uh, I'm not aware that we have seen anything like it, and I don't think it will exist in the archives of, of the present PGA. But, of course, any question for investigation, we will follow up. Do you know we will have access to archive of the previous PGA? Uh, I think some some of it, but maybe not all of it. But I'm not familiar with the practices here. So, if we ask for something, we'll see if we can can uh, answer uh, with the accesses we have. Otherwise, it must be the accesses of the secretariat. Can I can I ask? Uh, we use the microphones. There's people watching on the, on the webcast. Uh, question there. And if you could just uh, announce your organization. Certainly. Uh, Edith Lettera, the Associated Press. Um, Mr. Lukatov, one of, one of the things about the presidency of the General Assembly is that presidents are uh, paid by their governments. And uh, there is not the kind of transparency that there is in other major organizations. Would you recommend? in light of this arrest um, and these allegations that the General Assembly should uh, seriously look at changing the disclosure policies and do better monitoring of the incoming presidents of the body. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm paid the same from the Danish 
foreign ministry as I got as a speaker of the Danish parliament. And there is total access of information on that part of my work at the Danish government and according, and according to the just, regulations just of uh, access to information in Denmark. What I'm asking it about is looking more broadly at changing the way that uh, presidents of the General Assembly are not only chosen, but the disclosure responsibilities. I'm not questioning you. I'm, I'm mm, just yes, looking yes. at the broader issue of, isn't this something that, that the... Um, General Assembly as a whole should re-examine. Uh, if, if so wished by the General Assembly, I mean, uh, I am actually in no position either to investigate myself or to, to make new regulations without a, a specific decision by the General Assembly. Mm -hmm. Question here. Sure, thanks a lot. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access. Thanks. I really appreciate you putting yourself forward. So one, one question sort of just on reform. It, in reading through the indictment, a lot of it seems to have to do with, like, travel. For example, the PGA was, was the, these Chinese business people paid for him to travel to Macau to look at this prospective site, and there didn't seem to be a lot of transparency. So I guess just as a sort of forward-looking question, outside of your own salary, maybe you can think, can you, would you be willing to think of some way to make disclosure on Who's pay, you know, which salary line pays for which staff member, who pays for your travel, you know, if you go around the world, who pays for the travel, just to disclose it. And the second question I wanted to ask, and I'm sorry, to, but I, it seems like in the spirit of it, you might, I had heard that in, in this race for the head of UNHCR, that some people were, were and I'm not saying it, I'm not equating it, I just wanted to ask you in the spirit of transparency, that some, UN, both UN officials and delegations were summoned or, you know, asked to come to meetings in the PGA's office at which they met Hella Thorning Schmidt, a candidate for the, for, for the position, and some uh, found it strange. But I wanted to know, what is, what is the role or the proper, the proper use of the office to promote the candidacy of a, of a fellow countryman of yourself? Thanks. I can say for sure that Editorial Schmidt has not had any meetings at my office with member states or any officials in my office. I can say for sure that she has not had any meetings with member states in the office compound of the, the uh, president of the General Assembly. Uh, but uh, we, there was an unoccupied meeting room where she met with some, uh, some uh, staff from UN organizations in order to be better informed about uh, the work she is trying to be a candidate to. That's what is about it, nothing more, nothing less. Thank you, sir. A question there. No, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's okay. We, we have uh, uh, given uh, access to that room for several delegations uh, during this high-level um, meet uh, week uh, because they, they needed their room to have a meeting. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I don't see any kind of, 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 of intrigue or involvement from my side. I didn't, I, I, I even didn't take part in that decision, if you ask me, I didn't know about it. Uh, but but, but uh, I am certainly committed not to involve myself in any kind of, of uh, selection of, of the next UNHCR. But uh, so you had some other Mr. question President. in the beginning. Oh, well, it had to do with just Kind of yeah, a yeah. Reform proposal, disclosure yeah. of travel costs and yeah, salary. yeah, yeah. But but that could very well be. I think all of it has to be uh, decided in a process with with the general assembly uh, how to to go on with this. But but I can say uh, we have not used any uh, any money uh, up till now uh, from the trust fund for the PGA uh, in this presidency. Uh, and, of course, we have not received any private donor subsidies for, for traveling. Yeah, Mr. President, uh, Masood Heather from Donor Pakistan, I just want to know, do you, have you had any communication with uh, uh, Ambassador John Ash? Because um, he has not sought diplomatic immunity from the authorities. Do you know why? 
why he has not sought the diplomatic community? I, I haven't the faintest idea. I, 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 I haven't uh, uh, talked with him about see, this. See I mean, him. He was, as far as I understand, arrested this morning. Yeah, yes, yeah. but he is not. Um, the, thing, the question is, he has not sought any in the diplomatic community. Why? I don't know. I can't, I can't answer that question. I, I simply have no idea. Question here. Thank you very much. Uh, Ahmed Fathi, FATHI, uh, Arabic news media across Middle East and North Africa. Uh, thank you for taking the time addressing uh, and confronting this matter. I have a quick question about the vetting process for the PGA. Is it done by the country uh, that's occupying the seat, or is it done by the UN, or is it done by other member states? What is exactly is the vetting process before a person can assume the PGA? The vetting process, I can only speak f for myself. Uh, I don't know how it has uh, evolved for, for other uh, PGAs. Uh, what I know is that I was contacted around three years ago by the, the uh, permanent secretary of the Danish foreign minister who said, we think that if you are interested, we have a chance of, of getting you nominated be, uh, for this position uh, from Denmark because of two things. We haven't been there before. Uh, and uh, with, with your background as former foreign minister and present uh, uh, speaker of parliament, we think that's a combination that could uh, be attractive to accept for other members of the VIAC, of the VIAC group, the Western group. And then I thought that over for a couple of uh, three, four months. Uh, uh, and then I accepted the idea of bringing my candidacy forward. I didn't make any kind of, of electioneering. Uh, I had my work back in the Danish parliament. It was the, the Danish foreign ministry that walked around, asked for support. We got that immediately from the four other Nordic countries and pretty early from Germany and France. Uh, and, and then it, it turned out that nobody else was a candidate from the Vyadic group. That's what I can say about it. Yeah. But, but I, if you ask if I spent one single cent on election campaign for this, I'm so not the answer I'm, is no. I'm not, uh, <laughs> sir, I'm not referring to campaigning. I'm referring to vetting process, background checks. Uh, okay. Uh, facts uh, and, uh, vet, yeah. That's my point. I'm, I'm not... Uh, 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 well, we have in the Danish parliament rather far-reaching regulations about which personal information you should disclose. So I don't think that that has been made, but I don't know if anybody has made a more uh, in-depth uh, wetting of my person. Were you required by any UN entity to uh, submit any uh, personal information for background check, any release? Uh, they require no. the legal release so they can uh, investigate further. So no. there is no vetting process. No, Thank you no. so much. Uh, that, that was the question, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, there's a question over there, and then we'll come to this lady here. Yes. Uh, Joseph Klein, Canada Free Press. I just want to ask you the potential impact that this scandal might have on the whole uh, s sustainable development goals and the program because, as you know, one of the goals is good governance and transparency. <laughs> and also, <laughs> yeah. um, one, uh, it's alleged that one of the N NGOs involved in sustainable development is involved in, in this scandal. Um, so h how, how does your office intend to maybe deal with the negative fallout uh, and also the uh, perception that the UN is not walking the walk, so to speak? No. Well, I, I can't uh, give precise answers to that, but I agree with your point. If it is approved that persons or organizations involved in the work of UN also, but not only around the project of sustainable development goals uh, have taken part in in these kind of of activities uh, corruption of any kind of course we cannot continue to cooperate with those organizations or persons that's what I can say about it and it may well lead to uh, more uh, 
uh, ideas of which information to disclosure, both in vetting processes and uh, during the work. Uh, but as I said, it's up to the General Assembly to take that decision. Yeah. Question uh, here, the lady in the pink jacket. Fasihi from the Wall Street Journal. I'm, um, I wanted to know whether any other UN employee has been subpoenaed or under investigation um, regarding this case. And second, um, what was um, Secretary General's relationship with NACT? Well, how did they meet? How, how, how many times they met him and in what context? The Secretary General, you asked. I, I don't know. You have to, to, to ask the Secretary General. Uh, I don't know anything about that. Uh, if there are more people in the UN involved in this, I don't know anything about it. Uh, uh, it will probably be disclosed during the process at the court now. But I have no idea. As I said, I only learned about this whole thing this morning, as all of you did. Is the question there? Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Abdel Hamid Sayan from the daily Al Quds Al Arabi that mm -hmm. is based in London. Mr. President, the UN has been a target of criticism and attempts to discredit it throughout the years. Mm -hmm. Hardly there was any Secretary General who has not been subject to some kind of allegations, rumors. You remember the investigation during the uh, former Secretary General Kofi Annan? even the current Secretary General. So this time they're targeting the General Assembly, which represent the world, the parliament of the world. Don't you think that is some of these campaigns are intentional to discredit the UN and to make, especially after this uh, 70th anniversary celebration and a high, highly attended session, that the timing is also could be suspicious I am in no doubt that there could be people or interest out there that would want to discredit the UN, but, but I, I, I don't see any signs that this should be the case of this specific uh, uh, connection here. That, that's what I can say. But of course, uh, there are always unfounded allegations against someone somewhere. I mean, we just had the example of Helen Thorning Smith having, having meetings at my office <laughs> just a moment ago. But, but, but uh, uh, I don't think uh, that's the case here. Question here. Uh, Benny Avenue of New York Post. Um, on, uh, when is it? Uh, March 19th, 2013, David Eng, one of the people uh, that are the heroes of this indictment, mm. um, wrote to the Global Compact and said, I'm pleased to confirm that Sun Kyan Ip Group supports the 10 principles of the Global Compact with respect to human rights, labor, environment, and anti-corruption. Now, um, he was expelled on 9 April 2015. Uh, do you know anything about that? And more broadly, isn't the Global Compact, which is part of uh, the GA, it, and, and you participated in their opening uh, mm. last month, isn't it uh, somehow at times seems like rubber stamp for all kinds of nuts, uh, unsavory, put it this way, unsavory uh, groups that try to get like the UN in, in premature on, on their businesses? Well, I, I, I don't know any specific, uh, specificities about letters to and from the Global Compact in the past. What I know is that there is a new uh, chief of the Global Compact, a Dane, a lady, who took office uh, almost at the same time when I took office in the General Assembly. Uh, and about the Global Compact, I would say, yes, you, of course, you always, uh, when you have thousands of private companies enrolled in, in a cooperation with the United Nations during the, the Global Compact, there could be uh, some of them 
with bad behavior. You cannot socially exclude that. But on the other hand, I think it's extremely important and even more important after the uh, uh, approval of the Sustainable Development Goals that we are able to engage with private sources in order to finance this whole uh, great uh, undertaking. I mean, it will never happen if private sources are not mobilized to an extent we never saw before. So we have to run the risk that some of them uh, are following unethical insurance also. So that can happen if you have how many? 8,000, I think, companies involved. Yeah, and, and just an update on that, which you clearly have from the, the UN Global Compact, that the... Uh, the Sun Kian Ip Group is no longer a participant in the UN Global Compact. The company joined the initiative on the 9th of April 2013, as you said. It was removed from the Global Compact on the 9th of April 2015 for failure to meet the annual reporting requirement for two consecutive years. Mm -hmm. uh, companies that do not meet the reporting requirement are automatically removed from the initiative. The question uh, there. mess at the UN or how do you see the next step for you personally as I said our office will of course cooperate with any authority involved in uh, resolving this case I'm not sure we can contribute that much we came in as you know less than a month ago uh, but we are ready to cooperate in any way. Uh, and uh, if there should be drawn some conclusions in the behavior of the uh, PGAs or the office or any kind of, of new mechanisms for disclosing information, it should be by decision of the General Assembly itself. Right, let's have one last question and, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, thank you for this briefing and coming forward. Um, Majid Gilly from Kurdish Rouda Media Network. Uh, Mr. President, uh, can you uh, tell us more about any discussion you had uh, about this issue with the Secretary General? And uh, my second question is, um, uh, given the, how serious these allegations are, will the um, United Nations, the, the Secretariat or either the General Assembly conduct any um, review of Mr. Ash's record uh, during his, his uh, uh, period being a, a president of General Assembly? Uh, will there be further investigation by the UN itself? And uh, who will be responsible on that? Has there been any discussion about this? Thanks. No, there ha has been no discussion up till yet about that. I have not uh, been... Uh, Speaking with the uh, Secretary General yet on, on this case, uh, uh, and uh, of course we, we, will, we will meet and I think we will also discuss if there is anything more the UN as such can do, but, but it has not been discussed yet and I have no uh, answer to give you today on, on your question. Great. Okay, thank you very much indeed for, for, for coming. Thank you.